Hello everyone, in this tutorial what I'll be covering is PHP operators and the first set of operators that I'm going to go over is arithmetic operators and these operators are just your standard operators such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and a few others that you may not be familiar with such as the modulus, increment, and decrement. So let's start with some of the basic operators. Let's say, for example, I had a variable called value one, which equaled five or it contained the value five. And then I had value one equals value one plus five. And then I echoed out that information. I said addition value and then I said value one. And then just to make it easier to read, I put a line break in there ended with a semicolon. Now we should know that it's just taking the value or the numerical value five and adding it to the value that's inside variable one, which is five and storing that information back into the same variable. And it's gonna output the value 10. So let me just go ahead and save this file as operators.php. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and load that into my browser, type in localhost, the PHP basics, and operators.php. And as we can see, it displays the value 10. Very straightforward. Again, subtraction, multiplication, and division work similar. So nothing really complicated here. So let's just go ahead and get to the others that you may not be familiar with, such as the modulus. Now the modulus, the way you use that, the symbol for that is the percent sign. All right, so let's say we had the variable value two and it contained the numerical value seven. And then I said value two equaled value, forgot my dollar sign, value two modulus two. And I get into what that does in a second. And then I'm gonna echo out that information. I'm gonna say modulus value, value two, and then put another line break, end it with a semicolon. Now, what the modulus does, it acts very similar to division. They kind of act hand in hand here. What's happening here is the number that's been stored in value two is the remainder of what's left over when seven is divided by two. So we know that two goes into seven three times, but we have a remainder of one left over. So that's the number that's been stored in value two. So, so it's very similar to division, but it's just taking the number that's left over. So that should be not too complicated to remember. Now, Let's get into the other such as increment. And let's say, for example, I had value three. It contained the numerical value five. And then I said value three increment with two plus signs. And then I'm going to echo out that information. I'm going to say increment value value three. Put another line break in it with a semicolon. Now, what's happening here with the increment is very simple. All it's doing is incrementing the value that's in the variable value three by one. So since it contained the value five, when I increment it, now it's gonna contain the value six. So if it contained 100, when I increment it, it's gonna contain the value 101. So let me just go ahead and save this. Remember that the modulus should display one for value two. And for the increment, we should have the value six be displayed. So let me just refresh my browser. And as you can see, we have one and six. And the last arithmetic operator that I'm gonna go over here is decrement. And it should be very simple or straightforward what this is gonna do. I'm gonna put the value 100 in value four. And the way that you decrement a variable is with two minus signs. And then again, I echo out that information, value, value four with the line break into what a semicolon, save it, refresh it in my browser. And again, if we, when we decrement 100, we decrement it by one. So we get the value 99 stored in value four. Very simple. Now, the next set of operators that we're going to talk about are the assignment operators. All right, so the first assignment operator that I'm going to discuss is the equal sign. So let's say we had a variable called A, and we're going 
the variable a contained the numerical value six and then we had the variable b and it contained the variable four and then we said the variable a is assigned the variable or assign the value that's inside the variable b so it should be obvious what's happening here a is now going to contain the value that's in the variable b which is four so if i echoed out that information i said a now contains a and end it with a semicolon save it refresh my browser and now it's four very simple now the other assignment operators we have let's say for example i said the variable a plus or equals the variable b what that is doing is or what that is the same as is a or the variable a sorry dollar sign a equals or is assigned the variable a plus the variable b so it's just a short way of writing it i normally don't do this but this is a shorter way to do it but once you get used to seeing it this way it should be very easy to spot that so again that's the same as just writing a equals a plus b and obviously we probably have as you probably have guessed a minus and equals b i'm having a hard time typing here but in a way that's the same thing as a equals a minus b and you can do this with the division and the multiplication and the modulus and other assignment operators as well so moving on let's go to the comparison operators so let's say that i create two variables a variable called one it's going to contain the numerical value one and i write a variable called two and it's also going to contain the numerical value two all right, so what I should also mention with comparison operators is you can only have two conditions or two results, and those two results are true or false. These are the only two conditions that you can have. So let's get into the first comparison operator, and that is is equal to operator. And the way that you write the is equal to operator is with two equal signs. So let's say, for example, I had one is equal to two. What's going to happen for this condition is it's going to return false because we know that one is not equal to two. Or we know that the value that's inside the variable one is one and the value that's in the variable two is two. And we evaluate that we know that one is not equal to two. So let's say, for example, I had one is equal to the numerical value one. That is going to return true because one or the value that's in the variable one is one is equal to this numerical value one. Now, we also have not equal to the way that you write that is with explanation mark and the equal sign. Let me lowercase that we have not equal to. Let's say that's not equal to two. When we say that that's going to return true because one is not equal to two and we can also write not equal to using the less than sign and the greater than sign and write two there and again that's going to return true and again this is the way you write is not equal to so let me just go ahead and put that in comments up here and it's for some reason i'm having a hard time turning caps back on and off is not equal to and that's written with the explanation mark and an equal sign. Then we also have is greater than, or let's say is greater than, let me just spell that out, is greater than. And that's written with the sign that we should be familiar with. So if I said one is greater than two, that's gonna return false because one is not greater than two. But if I wrote one is less than two, it's going to return true because one is less than two. And again, this is going to make more sense when we dive into the next tutorial, which is going to explain if statements. So we also have is greater than or equal to or is less than or equal to same with is greater than or 
I should say less than. Again, just writing this here as I want to give you something to go back and reference if you need to. So let me write that there and let's put a less than up here. So again, if I had one is greater than or equal to two, it's going to return false because one is not greater than or equal to one. And again, this should be stuff you learn way back in elementary school. But in a way, just write this out is one less than or greater than two. That's going to return true. So again, these are your comparison operators. Most of these should be very uh, familiar with you, except how to actually write these. So again, the ones that may be a little bit different is the equal to. You always have to remember to include two equal signs and the is not equal to. And let me just write that up here like that for that symbol. So the next set of operators that we're going to get into is the logical operators. All right, so the first operator that we're gonna get into is the AND operator. And the AND operator is written with two ampersand symbols. So if I wrote the following statement or the condition one is greater than zero and two is greater than the variable one, that's gonna return true. So let's take a look at what happened here. We have the value one and we evaluate it and we say is one greater than zero? It is. So this statement or this part of it is true. So I'm just going to write below it. We have true already and then we have this and. And is two greater than one, which is true. So that's going to return true. So in order for this whole statement or this whole condition here to return true, both of these two situations have to be true. So for an and, let me just go ahead and write out here. We can have true, ampersand, true. It's going to return true. It's what we just had here. And I'm spelling true all wrong here. <laughs> but anyway, we can also have true and false. That's going to return false. And again, having issues with the spelling and trying to think what to say next. But anyway, we have we can have false and true. Again, that's going to return false. And finally, we can have false and false. It's going to return false. So in order for the and operator to return a true, we must have both situations or both conditions return true. If e either one of those are false, we're going to get false as a result. All right. So the next operator that we have is the or operator, and that's written with two vertical bars. And let's say again, we have one is less than zero. And we say, or two is greater than one. That's going to return true. Now, the reason that's going to return true is because even though one is not less than zero, we have this other condition over here that says two is greater than one, which is true for the or operator. Only one of these conditions have to be true. Only one has to be true. So let me just go ahead and write that out for you as well. We can have false or true. And the result is going to be true because only one of these has to be true. And let's say we have false or false. That's going to return false because neither one of those are true. And we can have obviously true or false and that's going to return true and let me correct this up here and lastly we can have true or true and obviously that's going to return true now we also have a not operator and that's written with explanation mark 